Good afternoon, and um, uh, thank you for writing in about the Meltrope uh, pickup video. Uh, thanks very much. Um, I haven't got round to replying yet, but I, I promise I will. Um, however, one person called Chris Grant uh, asked if I would just do a very quick video to show you how to put um, an early electric pickup directly into the computer. It's really, you know, it's quite simple. And he has an iGranic Phonovox pickup, which we did a video of some time ago. And it's a, a very early one, and it uh, came out in um, 19, late 1927 uh, in, in the UK. And here is an advert for it um, in the wireless world. December 1930, it's still going strong. And um, one thing I didn't know about this when I made the video um, was that it is an American design. And uh, 6dB per octave kindly told me that it was actually developed by a company called Pacent, P-A-C-E-N-T, <coughs> in the USA. And um, this makes perfect sense because um, electrical sound reproduction with a pickup like this uh, only dated, as far as I know, from, to 1926 when the Brunswick Panatrope was imported from the States uh, using a uh, moving iron pickup. And so uh, companies in the UK thought, uh oh, here we go, we're going to have to do electric pickups. And uh, by Granick probably didn't have time to design one, but they did have a connection with Patient in the States, and so they licensed it or used the design. We've mounted the pickup uh, on an arm, and it's on our spring driven record deck. And it's got its original lead with it, uh, which is about a yard long. And it's uh, probably not screened wire. In the early days, there, there was tended to be no polarity, um, no screen cable. It, it terminates in two little washers to be screwed up under terminals. Um, and so uh, this is what we're going to connect into our PC. Okay, now I'm nothing of a computer buff at all, so you'll have to bear with me on this one. But here's a back of a typical PC that has a sound card integral with the motherboard inside the case. And here are the sockets um, on the back, which are 3.5mm stereo uh, jack sockets. And the pink or red one is for a microphone input. And the blue one is for a line input and the green one is for a line output. Um, and this computer has no dedicated sound card. If it does, it would be in one of these slots down there. And here's a card which can be fitted into one of those slots. And from left to right, you can see there is a blue socket, which is a line input, uh, a pink or red socket, which is for a microphone input, and a green socket, which is a line output. I don't know what the other two sockets are for, um, but the three that we're interested in are the uh, blue, red and green ones. So, which of the sockets do we use? Well, the green one's the output, so that's for playing back. You could probably put headphones into it or maybe drive computer speakers from it. Oh, I don't know, I've never tried. Um, but we certainly don't put an input into an output socket, therefore it only leaves the pink and the blue one. Well, the pink one's for a microphone, and microphones only put out two or three millivolts. Um, in some present-day moving magnet cartridges are very similar to that, and you can indeed put a moving magnet cartridge in to a microphone input, although the sound will be different, but that's not important right now. Whereas these old pickups can often give a volt out or even more. So that's a line input level. So the uh, socket we want is the blue one. Well, just out of morbid interest, we're going to try and measure the output of the iGranic Phonovox pickup. We've got our pickup mounted on an arm here uh, with the uh, spring driven turntable and we've connected the output to this AC voltmeter, um, it'll give us an idea, a rough idea of what the voltage output is. So we now put it on. This is a 1250 hertz uh, track. You'll hear it faintly in the background, and you can see that it's putting out, it claims about 400 millivolts output, uh, but we mustn't uh, treat that figure too seriously. Uh, and the reason we treat uh, that figure of 400 millivolts with some caution is because ordinary test meters like that are not very good at measuring uh, frequencies as high as 1000 or 2000 hertz. 
Um, but the fact remains that there's, the output is quite high. Well, we knew that already. Now, this you'll have to take on trust. Here I have a lead, which has got two phono plugs on there. And uh, believe me, it stretches round to the back of my PC and it is plugged into the blue lining socket. Actually, the sockets on my sound card aren't coloured, just to be awkward, but it is plugged into the line input socket. So all we need to do now is to connect uh, this into the line input socket. So here's the connection. Uh, this is a lash up, of course, it's just an example. Um, here we've got a lead from the pickup, and then we've got two crocodile clip leads. Um, here is the lead which goes into the line input socket on the computer and we've put a phono socket on the end of the plug because that's got tags on so that we can connect the croc leads there and of course uh, that's the other channel because our pickup is mono so there's only one channel we can put it into both channels uh, later uh, now incidentally this lead here um, is five meters long uh, and that that's uh, a metre long, so we've got an 18 feet of lead, which is stupid, but I think it will still work. Uh, and when you set yours up, of course, you'll do it much neater than this. Now, the next step uh, you see here is the bottom right-hand corner of the computer screen, and you must enable the line input of your sound card. So we you click here, this is Windows 10, open the volume mixer, and you go along and make sure that we've got the line in activated, that's activated, that is deactivated, that is activated, so we can expect something to come in through the line uh, input socket. Okay, the next step is to open the recording software, and there are many different ones, uh, you, you must have one. If you haven't, uh, a, a program called Audacity is a very good one, it's an open source program, uh, but, uh, be careful where you download it from. I did download it once and it came down with a lot of garbage, but that's just you know one of the things that happens. The recording software I use mostly is Diamond Cut. It's over here, so we'll open it. And um, as soon as this hello screen goes away and that uh, tip of the day, which we'll close, we'll now prime the thing to record, edit, record a file, and pause. Now it's in record pause mode, so we can now, uh, we, we're happy with that, we can actually fire it up and it's beginning, beginning to record now and you will see the seconds ticking up there. So I will start the turntable and uh, <coughs> play a record which is a 1927 British Columbia and put it in now. And you can see the signal is coming up there, only on one channel of course because it's mono. You may even be able to hear the chatter from the needle because these early pickups, uh, you know, the, they called it needle talk. It made a lot of noise in its own right. We'll just let it run for a few seconds. Okay, that will do. So we take off the pickup and stop and save it. And there's a folder here I've been using and we'll call it final, final test and save it and there it is up on the screen and of course it's only on one channel we know that and what we can do is actually convert it into a, a, a mono signal uh, which is IFMR there it is close that down move it up to the top um, there it is and now we can get rid of the excess bit at the beginning uh, and then we can get rid of the it at the end. Uh, the other thing we can do as long as we're here is to increase the gain. Um, gain change up three decibels, six, nine, twelve. That's a bit too much actually but that'll do. And then we can play it back um, through our uh, computer. So here's our uh, file on the computer screen and uh, you can just see over here there's a loudspeaker, and there here's another loudspeaker. Now, the signal you're going to hear is coming out of the green uh, line output socket into an amplifier down here, uh, to which are connected these two speakers. Uh, but if you play it back on headphones from the computer, it ought to work um, OK. So here we go, let's uh, see what happens. Fire. Now, 
I hear you say that sounds absolutely dreadful, and you know something? You're absolutely right. And that's because if you play something loud on speakers and record it on a, 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 a camcorder with automatic record level, uh, which this has and it can't be defeated, uh, it does sound bloody awful. So I'm going to uh, leave you uh, with um, that extract as it is as a WAV file. But before that I'll say uh, thank you very much for watching this uh, video and I hope it may have been of some help to you. So uh, there we go. Bye now. Just a long shout.